Okay, this is happening, finally. Oh my goodness, I know, you're probably thinking shock horror and you are absolutely in your right to think that way because we are of the same mind. Welcome to the patio. I'm going to see what I can do about my bias. If there is anything to rescue, it's gonna be radical. And because it's also going to be pretty painful, I am going to be working in silence for the most part. <laughs> I hope the footage will speak for itself. At least I have some new growth starting, so if there's any hope, they are the last ditch hope that we have. I overestimated my competence with this orchid in my climate. It's not humid enough. The leaves always struggle. What did I say? I was going to work in silence so I don't breathe into your ear. Well, here goes nothing. My plan was just to yank her out. You see the pot is broken. This is so dangerous for me. We have some viable roots. There's that. On both. Huh. Awesome. Okay, that's more than I expected. You know what the worst thing is about all of this? Not just the physical limitations that I'm facing at the moment, but also the fact that those big white inner pots, they were super expensive. And they should have been able to be exposed to the elements for more than two years, which is exactly when the last time I cleaned this orchid up, that was the case two years ago. That makes me so mad. They were not cheap. Okay, so these are dead, which is fine, but the roots on this in the back is, they're still alive. I'm still gonna take it off though. And I'm putting her in a much smaller pot, of course, because I'm not going to be buying those inner pots anymore. And I still have the big masks, which were super expensive as well. Oh well, we'll see how things progress from here on in. Now being a semi-terrestrial, she can handle quite a bit of abuse, but there is a limit, you know? There, this is a bit exaggerated abuse. I had her out of the mask for months now since the inner pot started to snap at the rim and with her weight, I couldn't pull her out of the mask enough constantly and I was scared that something else would happen and then I couldn't get her out so I only ever just poured water through her no fertilizer no nothing the occasional misting oh and it's been bugging me and we have another one to do which is my cymbidium and that is the this this is child's play in comparison to what I'm up against with the cymbidium this is child's play. This is my, let's say, my practice run. Goodness me, she stayed with viable roots all the way to the bottom of the pot. Wow. Okay, well, that's phase one. Let's check out what we can do with phase two. Because this is the pot she's going to go into. Much, much smaller, but we'll have to wait and see if I can keep up or what is going to happen with this orchid, if she even makes it. We'll get rid of this support as well. It's always been a problem for me with my clumsiness, poke my eyes out, risk of, let's say. It's been a nuisance, so sayonara. <sighs> I mentally prepared myself for this project <laughs> for months. <laughs> I've been procrastinating. <laughs> I've been too scared to be doing this. I was very worried about what the repercussions would be. I'll let you know afterwards. Ask me in the comments, how did you feel 48 hours later? <laughs> and I'll be very honest. But the good thing, you know, the good thing, I'm going to get a lot of lecker back. So that's great. I know that the sorting and everything is going to be a little bit of a pain in the derriere. 
but I'm excited to fill my containers. So I'm just gonna do a little rough trim. I'm not gonna be too pedantic about it. Just enough to get all the roots into a pot. Even though they look dead, most of them are viable. That is insane to me. The neglect that she has had to deal with since, well, maybe was it January or February of 2024? She's been out of the mask and the only time she got water was when I occasionally, not even daily, poured water through her. And most of these roots are viable. That is insane. So any of you fires growers that are concerned, well, here you have proof. You do this to a slipper orchid, which is also semi-terrestrial, and you'll be in trouble. All the roots would die. Not so much with the fires. That's great news. I'm encouraged. Let's do a test drive here. Ooh, you come. If you want to. If you want to live, you better come into the pot. <laughs> this is going to be better than expected. Huh, that'll work. Now let's fandangle the microfibers up if we can. Thank you so much for already giving this video a thumbs up. I appreciate it. If you're new to my channel, this is a first for you. I always fill my pots with water so that the lecker disperses much more evenly around the roots. And if it is the first time here, please consider taking a moment to also subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that support as well. Thank you, because there are so many roots in the pot. I'm starting with large lecca and putting it in very slowly. Staying patient because this went better than expected. So now I can really be bothered to do this right. As soon as I see gridlock coming, I am going to add small lecker just to make life a little bit easier. We can get her a little bit lower in the pot because new roots need to find their way in instead of messing about. And normally I would place this orchid right in the middle of the pot, but because of the way the roots are growing, I've got too much resistance, too much tension on them. So she's up against the edge of the pot. Oh well, considering she's made it this far, that's just a minor detail. <laughs> Any keen-eyed viewers, I wonder if you saw me remove this growth right here. And if you were wondering if that was by mistake, the answer is no. I did that on purpose because I want the focus to be on these two. And with my climate, I have never seen a fire's growth that came out of the top of a pseudobulb do well. So instead of it draining energy from the other two growths it should focus on, I popped it off. This is more water than she's ever had in the last six months. Oh, goodness me. She's probably going, hallelujah. And I am doing exactly the same, hallelujah. One nasty pot out of my visual. Gosh, they were bugging me. Now the small lecker just to finish off, make life easy. And if you're wondering, why didn't I do it sooner if all this was bugging me so much for all these months? Because I was scared. Because I am physically challenged when it comes to something like this. I had to really, really, really pep talk myself into doing this <laughs> or losing the orchid. And well, I can't live with myself <laughs> if I don't try. But this would be, let's say, not the last hurrah, I mean, I do believe she's going to make it, but as she gets bigger again, you know, we're up against it again because my conditions just are not accommodating for this orchid at all. So the challenges will always remain at a certain limit that she will perform well and then she will decline. Just water. Seeing as the roots were left to dry for so, so long, even though they're viable, there is no point putting in fertilizer right now. We're just gonna get them accustomed to water again and then fertilize because I don't want to lose the roots that I surprisingly had. Anyway, before 
and after. <laughs> the orchid still looks nasty, but I do appreciate that I don't have to look at that nasty pot and now I can at least do her a little bit of justice for another year and then next year we'll see what we're up against. If you like content like this, <laughs> let me tell you, we have another one in store. My Cymbidium. This is a completely different animal. I don't know when I'm going to do it, so please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you won't miss it. And now I shall once again be MIA for a couple of days from YouTube because I have this to contend with. <laughs> happy days. No, really, it is a happy day. I'm glad I got this one out of the way. Now I can do the Rocky Balboa training and get myself mentally geared up towards the Cymbidium. I so appreciate you watching. Thank you for the support, for watching to the end, because it also gives me the opportunity to wish you a beautiful day on the condition, though. Please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.